Um, it is coming up on uh, about 19 after. Okay. So I think that we're uh, within the requisite time to call this meeting to order. Uh, Chelmsford uh, Board of Health meeting for February 1st, 2021. Uh, and I see that uh, as normal, our first time of business is to approve the minutes and I'll have people look over it and I will make a couple suggestions, Donna. Okay. Under old business, uh, the capacity, when I say the second paragraph, low general's capacity, uh, their numbers of COVID patients were about in the 70s and they had come down to the 50s. It's not a percentage in part because when they approach their capacity, they just open up, turn the uh, post op into another ICU and such so they can increase capacity. And they also, of course, have the new center uh, over at UMass Lowell. So that's the numbers there. And um, I didn't know if in the third paragraph, if we wanted to say that 99% of the time, I would probably just say usually. Uh, because well, I think we can't that, uh, change what was set. We can't change what was set. Did we actually say, did we actually we say must 99%? Have. She wouldn't have put it there. Sue? So you can't change the, the content of what was said at the last meeting. Okay, so the content for the second paragraph, because I said that was that it was 75 COVID positive patients down to like about the 50s for COVID patients. So that's a correction. And I think Sue was the one um, who was saying, talking about it going through the household, yeah. so I will defer to her. And you, you took that right off the tape, right, Donna? I will re-verify that, but you, I usually I take it right up the I, I actually don't. Right, I, right up the why would you make it up? I wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. And it, it's is it correct that on the new business uh, that was everybody's understanding is that it is so it is for people who have minor incidents that aren't followed up at the hospital so it doesn't generate a a report uh, that goes to the uh, animal control officer. Our understanding is it is still the uh, patient, the victim's responsibility to can't contact animal control. Is that everybody's understanding? Uh, so what what he actually had said at the so. meeting was, yeah, if if the person is being treated, one, if it's during his work hours, was pretty much he is contacted if it's a severe severe issue. But he was also saying he also gets contacted on the weekend and nights if it's a severe issue by Trinity or the police. Right. Right. So that was part of it. Um, but if the person is transported to the hospital, the hospital creates the bite report no matter what. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think that's basically what he said. No. Um, they may, they um, may be told they can contact the animal. He had said in there that if it's extremely severe, he would be contacted no matter what. Or if they decide not to be transported, they could actually contact him be told so i'm actually trying to, I'm trying to describe what he said but what's in mm -hmm. this thing is what he said but we can clarify right. it if we need to i guess and I, I think it's more that the um the complaint uh was the other end where somebody it wasn't severe enough that they declined to be transported to the hospital mm -hmm. and in those cases they said the complaint was that they didn't understand that they had to make the contact and nobody reached out to them. But I think what he said was what you write, wrote here is that if it's not severe enough that it requires them to be transported for treatment, and if a report isn't generated that then automatically goes to the animal control officer, it's left up to the victim of a minor incident to contact them and not all those need to be reported anyhow. If you're bitten by your hamster, you don't. That doesn't always need to be reported to the uh, to animal control. So to just to, so just confirming that's what everybody thought, since that's what the complaint was about. That's what I understood. I didn't yeah. think the person yeah. had to report. Yeah. Okay, yes. so this is yeah. correct. Yes. Uh, do, I, do I hear a motion to accept the minutes then? So moved. Second. Seconded. Second. All in favor? Aye. Yeah. Aye. Approved unanimously. Uh, our second order of business is incoming correspondence.
Morocco Avenue is the trailer park, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Is this a new spill or have we heard of this before? This is at least the third time we've had this one. Yeah. yeah. They can, every time they do an additional like remediation or make a change or whatever, we get an update from DEP. Okay. So it's not a new leak out there. No. But they just the want a big lawsuit. Oh, did Trailer they? Park. Yeah, the, the residents did, yeah. Katrina Avenue is also another one that we've seen it several times before, correct? Yes. Um, Katrina we've seen. Katrina is the site that the um, that the town of Chelmsford was hoping to utilize for all of the um, school buses in Chelmsford, and they knew that there would have to be some you know remediation on that site, stuff like that. So that's kind of what's been been going on. And I'm not really sure whether where that is at. Um, okay. As far as that goes. And shells, the former shell is the same thing. No, no. a couple times. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. When people have read over, I will entertain a motion to accept. I'll make a motion to accept the incoming correspondence. I'll second the in, uh, approving the incoming correspondence. All in favor of the incoming correspondence say aye. 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 Unanimous. Uh, as to outgoing correspondence. So where is second lane? Down by north side of Hart Pond. Yeah, it's it's over uh, along the along the pond, and right now it's I guess it has um, different cottages on it. And basically, what they want to do is they want to try to take one and expand it, and then they want to knock down um, is it three additional ones I think, and rebuild. But I don't I don't know if it's actually able to happen according to the bylaws and all that, but that's being heard actually um, this Thursday by the planning board. So they're, they're trying to rebuild the single family. Yeah, they're trying. Yeah. So they'll take, keep one, do an addition, mm -hmm. knock down the other three or four and build brand new homes. But it's all right now. It's all one, I guess. One lot. One lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One lot. How are you going to do that? Exactly. Yeah, that's a merger for crying out loud. So there's, okay. there's, you know, the the um, my understanding from what I read when this came across my desk is they're trying to look at the different regulations and the requirements to see if if it will allow it to be done, and they're presenting that to the planning board mm. on Thursday. Okay. Um, what? I mean, you know, this brings us full circle to the septic sewer thing. Is it going yep. to be sewered or are we looking at septic systems there? I mean, this is right on the water, right? Or yeah. by the water. So this is a pretty deep, this is a pretty deep piece of property uh, from second second lane to the water itself is, is, is pretty, pretty long, maybe 300 feet, 400 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I have no idea what they're planning to do there, but uh, it would be interesting to find out uh, you know, when they ran the sewer through there, um, you know, did did the original town review of it by the by the engineering firm? Did they look at the total acreage, which I don't know what the total acreage is, and sit there and say there's a potential here for you know three legal lots, two legal lots? I mean, I, I have no idea, kind of thing. But it, it, it is a from from what I know, it's a pretty good size piece of property and it's pretty big. I don't know what the total acreage is for these four or five numbers that they're they're putting together. So My uh, too is that they're um, you can't, I don't believe that you can have that many on one lot. No, 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 you can't. You have, you have to do a you have to do a subdivision. So that's have, that's kind of um, what their appeal is to the planning board. 
So they're it's... consolidating a number of small cottages. On no, the cottage? they're not, no, they're not consolidating. They're ripping them down and building new ones. That's what I mean. Is they're, they're basically like taking a whole bunch of little ones and they're gonna rip them all down and take one and build it bigger so that it becomes a single family. But do the little ones currently have sewer hookup? Oh yeah, I think no. they would. No, Richard, I thought they were done right in the beginning, the hot pond. Well, the, the issue is those little ones have been, well, again, I'm just going by my recollections going backwards. There was one that was uh, in the beginning, the, the lowest number here, uh, that was basically someone was living there and then they were gone and they never connected the sewer. Okay. The sewer was available to them. There was a connection point. But the other little ones, as far as I know, were not connected. But the main house that's sitting down near the water, of course, was the only one that uh, actually connected up. So those little ones have not been legally occupied for a long time, a long, long time. I mean, just because they're physically sitting there. but So they're going to have it, to go on septic then, right? Well, I, I again, as I said, it, when, when Weston and Sampson did their initial review, they would go by, let's say you own this piece of property, these, all these little multiple things. Now, again, I'm not talking about that they wouldn't have to subdivide it, but the bottom line would be that if it was five acres, and legally by subdivision with frontage and however you figured out how to do it, you could figure out there could be two or three legal lots there. Then I guess you could have two or three houses in the capacity. And again, that's been the argument from day one. The capacity was originally said to this property, you have the potential because you've got this many acres to have three houses, but you don't mm -hmm. right now, but don't worry about it because the capacity is there and then whoop, it's all gone. Right. So yeah, so it, 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 it's it's one of the, it's a, you, you're absolutely right. It's an issue again. Yeah, and it, it's an issue because they're yeah. by the lake, by the pond. Yeah. Oh, oh, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. They're not they're not on the uh, not connected list. The the last one that we have, right? <clears throat> well, there was but, one house that was. I know that's what I'm saying. But there was one house, the first one on the left when you went in on Second Lane, that was has been abandoned for. 10 years and it was ready to fall down kind of thing and but there was I remember someone living there so so that one was occupied what I'm saying year-round residence kind of thing it yeah. was occupied the rest of them not while I was around were any of them occupied I mean I don't know if relatives came over and, <laughs> and, mm. and stayed in a couple of them I, I that I don't know are they talking but, about they're going to have the one main house and they're going to consolidate the cottages into another second house? No, no. It's, it's only one, one, one house, one stru living structure on the whole thing. No, the, there's a current house right now that they're going to add an addition to. Mm -hmm. And then there's other small cottages that they plan to uh, demolish and rebuild individual homes in those mm -hmm. but not in the same location yeah. further back like on the property right but basically that they won't have even if they have you know another 10 percent or whatever it is it's afforded for a, a mother-in-law apartment there won't be the capacity built in for the new structures they're talking about building so they're talking about putting in septic systems near the lake Right. Yeah, but what's odd is that why aren't they presenting a proposal? I, I, I don't. Actually, I, I don't get. Um, well, you guys move on to the other stuff. I'm gonna try to pull up what they okay. typically say about septic. Okay. 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 Mm. Next thing. Where? The ten is, unit, the, is that the, is that the restaurant? Is no, that I'm not the there yet. Location? No, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not to the uh, to Pete brick house yet. I'm on. No, 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 no. 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 The two, Are you at Princeton? Yeah, that's the Glenview. That's the Glenview. The Glenview. Right. Okay. So they're tearing down the Glenview and putting up ten 
something. And apartment. Okay. Apartment. And what's that? Do we know what their situation on the septic is or sewer? Buy into town sewer. So they've already been approved and the, the, the capacity is there. So. Okay, good. And I see the brick house. Yeah. What were they doing <laughs> at 126 in the morning? That's exactly okay. the point. The bar was old. drinking, doctor. Yep. <laughs> 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 That's I'm what too, they call it. I find I'm being a pediatrician. I'm very, very naive. <laughs> I just don't understand what in the world if it's uh, four hours after uh, the curfew, oh. effectively, what in the <laughs> world they were thinking. Well, well, they weren't. And the owners didn't know about it based on my meeting with them. But I basically explained to them that um, it's their responsibility to know what's going on, whether they're there or not. Mm -hmm. And they're responsible for their employees and they're responsible for making sure that their employees are going according to the governor's regulations. So they were shut down for five days. Because we had received several uh, uh, complaints about masks and such multiple times over the last couple months uh, since June. Uh, are those being adhered to now that they've reopened? Yes. Okay. So they're a short leash and they're making efforts to comply and not resisting. Yep, at this point anyway, because we actually did get a complaint on Sunday and I did call, um, we got a, a phone complaint and I did ask the uh, police department to go by and they did and they were in compliance when they went by. Okay, and that was a complaint about being open, closed and not, or was it masks? It was a complaint about them allowing people to stay there too, too long. It was a complaint saying they weren't keeping people separate. Um, and that they were allowing, that they were exceeding the 25% capacity. And the bottom line was that none of that was, was in fact true. Okay. 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 And then there's the letter. Oh, there's the letter that uh, has my uh, <laughs> automatic sign off on the bottom of my iPad notes that yeah. says, yeah. as well with you and yours. Yeah. <laughs> you might want to do another template. <laughs> So uh, thank you for your assistance, Donna. Um, I tried to summarize what we had said at our meeting last time. Uh, did you find anything more about the uh, heart lane? Or sorry, the um, second lane? That's what I'm looking it up. It's, it is basically that whether the demolition, rebuilding, and repositioning of the current four separate single family dwellings on a locus with three new separate single family dwellings in an addition. <laughs> reconstruction would be this is what they're appealing would be less non-conforming than that of the existing homes um, and whether or not it would be detrimental to um, the neighborhood so that's the argument and then i'm trying to find in their information so repositioning three existing homes by constructing four new homes yes and, and basically um, it is that they're, they're taking them, demolishing them, and then putting them in, in a different spot on the property is what the proposal is. But our, our concern, I, from what I'm hearing, is that we're just mostly concerned about what, what the septic versus sewer situation is. That's it. That's, uh, a, that's the only thing we can be concerned with. Right. And for that, Richard, do you remember the, na the name of those new particles that uh, we have to look out for? Oh, the P. Okay, so I'm sorry. It says right here, the proposed homes at 24, 26, and 28 second lane will be two-story colonial, one-car garage consisting of three bedrooms, two and a half baths, and each will have a one-car garage. The proposed new addition slash reconstruction will be ranch style with a walkout level. All new homes will be connected to the existing town water and town sewer okay, okay. good and, okay uh, again, is that their as, as i said if the town originally gave them the capacity no, they must already be connected okay they, good yeah, excellent that's a possibility good. yeah so richard what's the name of those new p fast or what's the new particle yeah that the, the fluorinated <laughs> yeah, i think it's p fast it is p fast okay it is p fast okay p fast and p sass yeah, I'm saying this yeah. in part. I think that uh, we—I was trying to remember what the 
name was when I was talking to Virginia over the weekend. Uh, okay. But the idea that, uh, in addition to the fact that over the you know past 30, 40 years, we've had a number of violations uh, that led, brought us to sort of put the sewers in place and try to achieve 100%. Now we have new particles we got to look up, uh, out for, and if they get into our water supply, we can't get them out. Right. And so we're a little bit nervous about uh, going forward. We have enough zone two and uh, aquifer and all uh, that we're just trying to be make sure that we're careful and go back to our original plan of hoping to get 100%. Okay. Okay. So uh, I will entertain a motion if anybody wants to give me on uh, approving the outgoing business. Want to go for it, Richard? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve <laughs> the outgoing. I'll second. Okay, all in favor of approving the outgoing business, say aye. 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 Unanimous. Uh, now on to old business, and the first issue is uh, COVID update. All right, so because of how incredibly busy we have been um, in the office, it is just nonstop. Uh, phones are out of control ever since, you know, Governor Baker made his announcement last week that they were going to open back vaccine up to everybody over the age of 75. And it's difficult to get the message out there that we just don't have enough vaccine for everybody. So we had planned a clinic. So we had our first responder clinic at the beginning of January. Um, I was really disappointed um, and irritated because after that clinic, we had some doses left over. And I had reached out to someone at the state level and said, can I plan a clinic based on the guidelines and the guidance from the state? And I was originally told that I could not, that uh, that was designated as regional doses and that I wouldn't be able to just go and have a clinic. In the meantime, during all that time, I was going through filing all the paperwork and getting what I needed to get done in order for Chumsford to be able to have our own clinics in Chumsford for Chumsford residents, as well as be able to vaccinate like in phase one, there were plenty of people in phase one that um, you know, had been calling us to say that they had not been vaccinated. So when I was told I couldn't use the vaccine, I didn't plan a clinic initially. And then I got my approval to be able to do vaccines within the town and within the community. And they send you a survey essentially to fill out every single week. And when I filled out my first week, we had planned a clinic. We said we could do 350 people. And lo and behold, I was essentially penalized because I had vaccine in my freezer too long. <laughs> <laughs> kidding me I was <laughs> beyond frustrated so anyway um we, yeah. planned, we planned a clinic for last week we did major outreach to the community we reached out to physical therapists occupational therapists dentists um home home care agencies because we had a number of home care agencies and thank you Donna because Donna worked her butt off reaching out to all of these different people, calling them saying, have you been vaccinated yet? If not, you know, you're in tier one and this clinic is gonna be specific to you. So to make a long story short, their initial responses to us were going to be that we had approximately 350 people to vaccinate. We said, great, we've got 350 doses. When all was said and done, we planned the clinic, we had people sign, sign up. And what people did is they gave us the number of their employees, not the number of their employees that actually wanted the vaccine. Oh no. Once mm. signups came, we were at more like around 150 or so. And so I made an executive decision and I said, we're set up for 360 people at this clinic it's january 28th as of february 1st we open up to over 75 our phone had been blowing up anyway so we posted the remaining doses on our website for people 75 and older and it was full what within an hour two hours yeah. Yeah. Um, I had reached out to the housing. I had, you know, talked to them about it. But unfortunately for our elderly housing, 
they said that they had quite a, about 150 people that are over 75, but out of that 150, there's about 100 that don't drive and they can't, they can't get mm -hmm. up. And that's that's going to be a huge challenge for us as, as we move forward. Yeah. So anyway, we filled that clinic completely. And then um, when all was said and done, it was a very long day. It was at the Yelks, but we did uh, close to 400 people. At, at that vaccination. Good job. So um, they can't say that I have vaccines sitting in my freezer. <laughs> so <laughs> at this point, uh, we also scheduled an over 75 clinic with the remaining doses that we had, which was supposed to be tomorrow. It's been rescheduled to Thursday. Again, the focus is 75 and older. And it is also anybody who was in tier one that maybe hasn't been vaccinated yet. So if we get a phone call from a dentist, hygienist, a chiropractor, um, a home care person, uh, we will try to fit them in. The problem is it fills up so quick and we only have so many doses. Mm. So yeah. we had decided that we could, we could make it happen where we could have two clinics every single week. We could just make standard clinics and we could probably put through um, full days each time, probably about 350 people. So at least we could do about 700 people a week. Unfortunately, we could not do that because we're not getting the vaccine. Right. Right. So at this point, the constraints are, um, and I think the state is just, they're not holding it back from us. I don't think they're getting enough um, from the federal government, but Unfortunately, they're only allocating us 100 doses a week. Now, we, they did send us um, the number of doses that we need for next week's clinic for our second doses for all of our first responders. So we do have enough of that vaccine. Uh, but going forward, we have to fill out a weekly survey. We can request the number of doses. We tell them what the capacity is. But even if I say, my, I did it last week, I told them my capacity was 700, 700 doses. And I got an email back saying, you requested 700, you've been allocated 100. Um, so it's going to take forever. And, and not only that, the difficulty here is that the amount of work that goes into setting up a clinic mm -hmm. for 100 doses it's just you know and i don't want to hold on to the vaccine but mm -hmm. there's just so much work in coordinating and planning for just 100 doses i'd rather do a 400 person clinic than uh, than a 100 but we'll do it we'll we'll mm -hmm. get it out there we did have a call with um lowell general on uh thursday actually last thursday when we were at the elks we had a zoom call and lowell general is they have a huge building on the boulevard that is under construction as we speak that they're um, you know, redoing. And that is going to be um, this region's uh, mass vac vaccination site. And that's the, cross, that's the Cross River building that yes. is just west of um, the Rourke Bridge over there, just yeah. west of the, of, the, of the new market basket. Yes. Yep. Massive so, parking lot, very easy access. It has a traffic light. Huge parking. And yeah. And so they were talking about that. And that's supposed to launch uh, within, you know, actually, they said after February 8th, all of their um, appointments are going to be there. And initially, they want to start off doing 1000 people a day, and eventually get up to, you know, three, four, 5,000 if they get supply and if they have volunteers. So they'll also partner with us um, as far as helping to get our community vaccinated. Um, and, and with that partnership, you know, the expectation of course, is that we provide them with volunteers for those clinics mm -hmm. if, if their supply is, is going to be allowed to be allocated to Chelmsford residents. So I'll partner with anybody to, to make this happen. Sure. Uh, Know, in addition to still trying to do our own community. The other thing that I recently found out about is that Lowell General has um, a mobile clinic that they will do with COVID. So I actually uh, 
was talking to uh, Steve Maffetone today, who's our you know emergency management director, and he's been working very closely with us on all of these clinics. And uh, we're going to see if for those people that are in our housing that are over 75 currently that can't get out, if maybe we can collaborate with them on doing um, In the last week, uh, I would say our numbers have come down a little bit. We're still in the red. I don't have the exact numbers because I just didn't have to get them. And, but you know, we're still trying to do the education piece with people about the social distancing and wearing of the mask. And you know, doing we are sending more and more people to the CP. Um, somebody's got wicked background. Yeah, not me. <laughs> <laughs> not here. So, oh, it's gone. There we go. So anyway, that's where we're at um, with that. We've been in the red for, I don't even know how many weeks now. So a long time. It's been a long time. Oh. And, you know, unfortunately, if people don't start going more by the rules and, you know, adhering to, to what they're supposed to be doing, we're going to stay in the red. Um, and, and now the effort obviously has to be getting people vaccinated and, and getting the vaccination out there as much as we can. So, you know, some of our efforts, as much as we're still doing um, case follow-up, more of our efforts are now being focused on the vaccination clinics and planning those and trying to protect uh, the community. And we're not on the state map because currently any clinics that we're having in Chumsford are specific to Chumsford residents or for example, Chumsford, like home care agencies in Chumsford mm -hmm. so, um, who have home health care, people taking care of people. That's, that's who, and we have to go by the governor's guidelines. And then, you know, we sometimes have extra doses at the end of the clinic. We, we were trying to keep a list uh, and that just got so over the top that, you know, trying to keep the list is impossible. And we're also trying to figure out ways that we're going to be able to help elderly to register for these clinics because it's all online. And some, yeah. you know, some people don't have computers. And so we're going to, you know, reach out and try to engage the city center and, and volunteer to help people. That, hmm. There, there is a lot of background noise that I can't tell where it's coming from. You don't, yeah, you, you I, don't hear, I don't have anything here. You don't hear nothing what, in my house. Nothing. I can hear it. Um, yeah, I, I can. I, I'm, I'm having Zoom. trouble with Sue, but I don't. Sue, I, I think can, it's when you're talking. Sue, I think it's when you're speaking. Is it not weird? Because I'm in this room all by myself. <laughs> no, but is is it a repeat thing? That's what I couldn't tell. I can't tell. No, she fades in and out. No, I, I yeah, I, I know the fading, but I didn't know if the background was sort of background. It almost repeated. sounded like there was a TV or something in the background. Yeah, I know it does. Yeah, I don't hear it now though. No, I don't. Either. So, with regard to COVID, first of all, amazing job by everybody in the Department of Health because yeah. I mean, I realize that this has all been since I've been on the on the board. I think we just gone from one crisis to the, another crisis, and I hear stories that at some point in the past that they were like pizza parties at these meetings and it was low-key and boring and it's not been boring since i've been here and i try my darndest not to contact you guys because i realize you have the same number of people when you're like going out there and checking uh the convenience stores as you do now when you're trying to like handle everything yeah. else so the first thing is is amazing job and amazing job with like coordinating with like new partners, Lowell General Hospital and everything else and seeing if we can get their, uh, their mobile van out there to, to, to address our, uh, the seniors who can't drive and such. So thank you very, very much. Uh, do we have Moderna, I assume, or Pfizer? Moderna. Moderna, okay. So the, it has this, the, uh, it's not like we try to squeak an extra dose out of it then. We get the number of doses out of it that's supposed to be there, correct? So interestingly enough, when we had our very first clinic, there were some vials that we were able to get extra doses out of. 
and it without would, having any special syringe or anything right right okay. so we were using the syringes that were sent to us from the state mm -hmm. now they send different syringes pretty much every single time and i'm sure they got a, a good deal for the bulk or whatever because the syringes that we got for this last clinic were horrible and some um some of what we were dealing with is we were not even getting 10 doses out of a vial we were getting nine and not 10. so that was huge as far as affecting our clinic and part of the reason is it was a safe it's a safety needle because they sent safety needles and the way the cap is there was like a, a pocket that would probably hold at least another you know 0.3 cc's mm -hmm. of vaccine in the little bevel part which then would when you do that in a 10 dose vial you don't get 10 doses mm -hmm. so what we ended up doing last week when we discovered that that was happening is we literally picked through every single box we had and we pulled out all the good syringes that we knew of good. and and then we tried some um some safety syringes and i'm trying to purchase some of my own syringes because number one we can't afford to be losing doses uh -huh. uh, the issue is now when you go to order so we, we order through mckesson and and over the years, every, every facility, so you know, where Town of Chumps and Board of Health has a list of an approved list, say with McKesson of what we can order. And there's also usually a capacity to that and you're allocated so much to be able to order. Well, we've never had to order this many. So I'm not allocated the number that I'm asking for. And they're trying to seek out approval so that we can get a higher allocation. And I'm just hoping that as we move forward, that the state sends us the better syringes and not the ones that are losing doses because we can't afford to be losing. Yeah. No, we can't, no. Um, Sue, just an idea, okay. once you figure out how you can transport the elderly people, maybe you can um, send some sort of notices with Meals on Wheels with a phone number or something. Well, and the, um, we're working with um, Connie Donahue, who's the um, assistant director over there. Yeah. Um, and we keep in close contact with her and, and they're willing, and she's already told us she's very willing to help us. Yeah. Um, her, there's, there's three social workers that are willing to physically go into, you know, people's homes yeah. and help them register. And, and that actually creates them as a COVID facing um, healthcare worker, right. which would, would allow them to get vaccinated to protect them if they're going into all of these homes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Will we still have our own clinics or are we going to have everybody go over to Cross River once it opens up next week? My goal is if we have the supply to have our own clinics in Chelmsford. Okay. And in addition to, you know, supplying help to Lowell General. Because the dates that we plan our clinics, not everybody's going to be able to go during those times or dates or whatever. And, and you know, we just, we'll just support each other as far as how that works. I got to tell you, that Wharf Bridge is a nightmare to get over sometimes. Yeah. Yes, no is. easy way to get there. It's no. been a lot better since COVID. Yeah, been, but, but it's true. still bad. Yeah. It shows how bad it was before. Right. Right. So. But at least the location on the other side of the Rook Bridge for Chumsford residents is pretty convenient. Yeah. yeah. You know, versus either the hospital itself, because I think right now they're doing, are they doing the vaccinations um, in the Clark Auditorium at the main Clark hospital? Clark Auditorium, but they're gonna move everything over to Cross Point, uh, Cross River next week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so <laughs> okay. Um, I'm hoping that they uh, get you better information. I hope that you get your full doses out because you know, if it's wasted with their syringes, uh, I'm not sure if we're still liable for that. Uh, and I know also that uh, with the Pfizer's, once they figured out that they could usually squeak out another dose with the special syringes, Pfizer said like, oh, well you bought, you know, a hundred million doses. Well, we're gonna give you 20% less now. So yeah, you yeah. squeak it out of the vials. And the problem is, is that that requires the special syringes that pe most people don't have yet. 
uh, but I guess that just make sure that the state knows that they need to supply better syringes or complain to Moderna uh, that they don't get enough out of a given. Well, it's a, it's a deja vu to H1N1. You got it. Yes, I remember that exactly. Because exactly. The, the they sent us out those awful. syringes that were horrible. Horrible, they were horrible. Yeah. <laughs> and for them, it might be, a, you know, I mean, they're trying to supply all of Massachusetts. It might be a supply and demand thing for them too. They maybe can't get them all. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, that's where we're at. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's all much, that much different that I have to report that it's still uh, plus or minus 50. I think today I logged in, it was like 50, uh, 43 patients uh, that were COVID positive at the hospital on some days it's 53 patients. Uh, but, um, and I haven't heard, Sue, have you heard what the, what the uh, census is like over at UMass Lowell? Last I heard there weren't that many people there. Okay, because last I heard there was one, but that was like weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So. No, when I when I talked to them, there were a little bit more than one, but I was going to say like under ten. Okay, we weren't we just weren't sure if it meant that they had filled up Worcester and this is like then they're going to start filling up Lowell next, uh, or how they were allocating the patients. Um, I haven't heard anything about variants uh, causing a particular problem, whatever, and people are getting their shots, mm -hmm. which is good. Yeah. Although um, I guess we should reiterate that when you get your shot doesn't mean you're necessarily protected. Uh, you have two shots, 95% chance that you're protected. You have 5%, you got nothing. So that you should still make sure that when you're in public that you're wearing your mask and washing your hands and six feet apart and being sensible, uh, respecting other people. And when 50 to 70% of the population is vaccinated, that's when hopefully we'll be able to sort of go back to some semblance of a new normal that is closer to the old normal. Mm -hmm. So. All right. So I have a um, memorandum of, of understanding. I think we've done this before. <laughs> yes, I, I think this is my third approach. <laughs> um, so, so we invited Lisa back because at one point I think um, we didn't have we were down a board member at the mm -hmm. time I yeah yeah then, yeah I've never signed this yeah right and then uh, well it's never been signed and then Rich oh, okay. Rich came on and I think. Um, you presented again, Lisa, but there, there were a couple questions and you were going back to the drawing board and then we were gonna do it several months ago and we just haven't been able to get back to it. So thank you. Right. I appreciate your pain. Oh, absolutely. You are doing extraordinary things. Um, and thank you to Donna for helping me a little bit earlier this this today to, to try to get ready for this, uh, this evening. So uh, my name is Lisa Moroni. I'm the Director of Business Development. I came on as a newly created position for the town of Chelmsford in 2017 with an initial uh, primary focus of filling up a million and a half existing empty square footage, uh, primarily on Route 129. And part of the reason why I'm coming forward uh, to the Board of Health is to provide uh, an additional layer for business attraction. I still have about 850,000 square feet of empty space. We've cut it in half. We were about to fill up another 400, 500,000 right before COVID um, came. And I had presented to the board on, in March of 2020 um, and then about a week later, the, uh, the world spun off its access, access for a little bit. And uh, so it's been put on hold. So what you have in your packet is a memo of understanding that was created last March in uh, conjunction with conversation with Mass Biotech Council. And I was working with them on um, where Chelmsford is in terms of we have a gold status at the moment, 
the um, the tiers are bronze, silver, gold, and platinum is the highest achievable, and we, we have gold status. And it seems that upon my arrival, the only missing step to achieving platinum was basically a documentation process. Um, and so what we've learned is that that documentation process in the in the memo of understanding, it's a one page, I won't read it for you unless you'd like me to, but it doesn't create any more work for the Board of Health. Yay. <laughs> and um, it is something that is an acknowledgement that um, the, the life science companies and the scientific companies in Chelmsford will operate and adhere to the National Institute of Health Guidelines. And so there's no enforcement by the, by the local level, by the town. This is, again, just a document to acknowledge that um, at the platinum level, the, the NIH is um, engaged with those higher life science companies to adhere to those guidelines. And basically the verbiage in this MOU, if you read through it, and that's essentially what it's saying. Um, can you hear me okay with the feedback? I know it's not on my side. <laughs> yeah, it's fading a little bit again. But yeah, okay. the TV's coming yeah. in for you too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it was enough. You, you could hear. Okay, yeah. so as you may know, um, Thermo Fisher Scientific is in Chelmsford. They are on Alpha Road and they've ch chosen to expand very significantly into a long term empty building at 220 Mill Road. And um, it's really a great project for us in the crossroads. It helps us to continue that cluster of life science companies that we have. They are investing over $50 million into that one building. It is approximately 110,000 square feet. And we know that jobs associated with life science industry are good paying jobs, um, great livelihoods for families to uh, live and work in the, in the same community. So we've decided to try to pursue for that effort of the still, you know, health, too healthy of a number of, uh, of empty square feet, 850,000. So to add to the business attraction package, it would be very helpful to have a platinum status rating, um, considering that we have some high level uh, life science companies. Triton Systems has doubled in size. They have moved to 330 Bill Ricker Road and they have hired 70 new people in their expansion. And um, so we're starting to really become um, notable and um, learning from our brokers and realtors in the, in, the, in the crossroads of 129 that because of the way COVID affected the life science industry and, and many all industries, and because most of all my empty space is multi-story office buildings, brick buildings, they're realizing that they can operate, they don't need that um, highly sought after address at the Boston Seaport anymore. They likely will not be bringing back um, a certain number of jobs will remain remote because they are just as effective and productive in that way. They don't need the same type of real estate. So we're getting new interest from some of those advanced technologies in communications and, and science and life science looking in Chelmsford because we are half the cost about 30 minutes away. So uh, we're hoping that this coming season when things start to heat up typically in real estate in March, April, May, that we'll be filling up more uh, um, empty space. Really hopeful for that. We, we positioned our zoning, our overlay districts and um, you know that was a lot of hard work by Evan prior to my arrival. We finally have our first uh, restaurant coming. Prest Cafe has signed a 10 year lease in uh, 330 Bill Ricker Road with the drive through. And so in this, in this business park, it's 600 acres, 152 companies, and we still have a lot of, um, a decent amount of healthy uh, amount of empty space to fill. So 
I'm looking for your support in a signature for the Memo of Understanding to help elevate our existing biotech rating from gold to platinum um, through the Mass Biotech Council. And Richard, I don't know if you were yeah. here when we had the initial discussion about this, but there was a lot more information. There's also, you know, what you had to do in order to uh, to achieve this, but it was also the, uh, my recollection is the protections because I'm sure that when people see that we're yes. going to sort of have more biotech, they're going to be afraid. I believe Sue's, I think Sue sent me some, some of okay. the information. Didn't just Sue? I'm pretty sure she did. Yeah, there is a lot of, there's a lot of information. Um, I can forward you the web links to, mm. to uh, peruse the National Institute of Health guidelines for uh, the platinum status. It was too much um, data to send uh, through the internet. Uh, but it's the same data that was provided last March. Yeah. And so it's not filling space for the sake of filling space and it's not filling space for money. Uh, this is a very defined, you know, which you have to do in order to achieve it and very defined as to what needs to be done in terms of protections for the community as well. Uh, right. So that, that in terms of risks, uh, I don't think we had a concern there I'm going to look to, to uh, Anne Marie to comment on the verbiage and if there's any concerns that she has there. I, I don't have any. I think we should sign it. Okay. I, mean, I, I would make a motion that we sign this memorandum of understanding. Now, there's a second report, second one here uh, for Burlington. Is that just an example of how they wrote theirs? Yes. Okay. Um, and so that ours is more to the point and has less specifics in it, but that gives you more leeway. So yes. any further discussion? No, I mean, I think the, <laughs> I mean, I hate to <laughs> come back to it, but um, again, with all the empty space, that, that means that there's a lot of less sewage going out. But I think the, the town has to understand that all these companies, including the one that uh, Thermo, uh, that, that was being proposed to go in at uh, 220, that, uh, in this area, we can't we can't be allowing any any dramatic waste to be going to the ground, with, without which basically means going to the central sewer. So I hope we don't get ourselves in in a bind going down the path. Hopefully we don't. Hopefully it all balances out, which it, it probably should. Uh, but you know what kind of capacity does a build an existing building have mm -hmm. with an office space compared to the new proposal for whatever as long as it balances out uh, so, I, I i don't see that there's probably going to be an issue and i i would vote to do it but, but as i said i think it's an issue that the parties that are looking into making sure that we get capacity or understand what our concerns are in this area but as i said i think it's it it, it should balance without looking at the specifics. It should balance because the amount of capacity that a certain operation would have is probably compared to office space and whatever, it'll probably balance out. But as I said, I don't know any specifics about it. So well, I can tell you, uh, Go ahead. involved with um, the center district, and they do know about, we have had many discussions about okay. our empty space when it fills up and how that affects the water sewer, the gray water, the discharge. Okay. At all of those meetings, I'm very connected in, in regard. And I also want to point out that by signing the memo of understanding, it still gives full, full um, you know, empower, empowerment to the rest of the approval process through the permitting process. Mm -hmm. okay. It doesn't change any of that. There's yeah. still that stringent approval that will be in front of the board um, and the other appropriate boards with, for permitting. Okay, well, so as, as, really as, as I said, from, from what I know of, yeah. of it, I know Sue sent me some original stuff. I wasn't on the board yet because they couldn't appoint and, and whatever, and the election time frame was over. So she, had, she was sending me some stuff. So I, I, remember re I remember going through it and reading it and some previous stuff that we had looked at years ago before that. So as I said, no, I, I wouldn't have a problem in signing this thing. Uh, at all, as I said, my, my my first impression is there's a way to balance it and allow things to be reoccupied and this, that, and whatever without getting into to, you know the hassle. <laughs> but in, but in terms of gold.
platinum in terms of biz, you know, business aside that you know occupy, we're okay going platinum mm-hmm. with regard to this. And with regard to this letter, that uh, it sounds like the three of us are in favor of signing this letter as a board and a department. Um, any further discussion? No. Okay, Emery on mute. Uh, I will, uh, Richard, do you wanna? Yes, uh, um, well, I think she already made a motion to approve it, so I'm gonna second it. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay, yeah. So, um, and uh, Donna, how do we get our signatures on this? <laughs> um, well, because we need the original signatures, we'll, we'll do drop by. Yeah, we'll drop by just as we would have if we were delivering a packet. Yeah. Okay. Does that work? Or do you want to stop by your place? That's even easier. Uh, what's what? Uh, Richard and Amory, what is your preference? I can swing by. It's not a not I an issue. By. It's, uh, just give me some latitude on getting there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll try to swing swing by most likely on Thursday if that's okay. Same okay, here. Donna? Thursdays Thursdays a good day for me too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thursday or what? Uh, in the morning, we'll be down at the clinic, so we'll be down in that area. I can have it with us, or in the afternoon, I'll be okay. Uh, whichever, whatever, whatever you want. The clinics where on Thursday? At the town hall. In the gym. At the town gym. hall. Yeah. Okay, so the gym, town hall in the morning, and then you'll be up at the uh, department oh, in the afternoon. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'll find you one place or the other. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you um, so much. And. Is there anything else that we need to actually accept on uh, old business? The rest was a COVID discussion. Right. So we're all set there. Okay. Um, and with regard to other. What's Mako? Odor complaints? Yeah, that's a um, pink uh, automobile painting company mm-hmm. okay so you don't see any you don't see any monthly reports from myself or darcy because we just didn't have time um or amanda um so you should have just put a big piece of paper that said COVID 19 on it and i almost did and i knew <laughs> you were gonna get a kick out of that and i said well they'll know um <laughs> it's obvious I was, I was gonna write across it COVID 24 <laughs> seven. It's appropriate. We understand. There was an electrical, f- there was a fire at a chicken coop. Oh yes. Yeah. They were an having a party. Un- an unpermitted one. <laughs> oh dear. Damn, that's I'm bad. I, I don't oh. mean to, to laugh. They're I picture now, a skill. Okay, so it wasn't a chicken meth lab. Oh. Um, and then, um, 195 Hunt Street, three goats and possibly chickens. Yes. And no permit. So, letter. so and we've sent a- We were not permitted as well. So Michelle was um, dealing with them. A letter was sent. Donna okay. was not we permitted, right? Yeah, we sent them a letter that they needed to uh, contact us. But they're not permitted yet. Not yet. And they haven't contacted us, have they? Not yet. Okay. So uh, what point do we do follow up on that? I believe that was just sent certified letter the last Wednesday. Um, so I, this week will be a follow up if nothing happens. Mm-hmm. We do still have some people who are still not permitted. Um, and the, um, the difficulty is typically, you know, I would write letters to them and all that, and time is just so slim at this point. Uh, but we do have. Um, we do have some people that are still not permitted that we are reaching out to. Uh, Paul Haberty is actually reaching out to um, at least one person on my behalf because they're still not permitted. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, the Littleton Road Medical Supplies, Medical Sharps. That was um, our storage. So we had some stuff in store okay. on Littleton Road and I actually had Mark go out there and basically bring all of those things back to the town hall so that we could do an inventory and, you know, basically start using them. 
I was afraid we had some sort of like medical waste that was abandoned or something. So, <laughs> no, I hate to say it, but I think what wasn't that the leftover stuff from H1N1? Wasn't much left. Wasn't. No, no, I'm not, I'm not saying there was, but we because we've been pulling over for years. But I'm just saying is they sent us they sent us the lousy syringes back then, and we had just boxes full of them. What we got, <laughs> what we got was interesting though, because what he brought back was a huge box of alcohol. Um, they're not the prep pads. They're right. like the alcohol wipes on a big Q-tip. Yeah, and they're all still moist, wet, very smelly alcohol. Wow, I could, great. Yeah, I was shocked. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, it, it, it's, a, it, it's temperature control place, so it was, you know. Yeah. So stuff would potentially last there for a while, so. <laughs> All right. Any further discussion about other? If not, I will take a motion to accept. Better hurry up. My dog's going out of his mind. Oh, OK. I'll, I'll make a motion to accept others. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 OK, we accept the other. Uh, now, for public input, I, I do wait. see at least one name I don't recognize here. We have Adam Brando on. Adam, did you want to speak? No, thank you guys. I just uh, just listening in. Thanks. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so if we have nobody that is um, that we can identify or is speaking uh, for public input, then I will close the public input session. Um, let people know that our next meeting is uh, Monday, March 1st, uh, 2021. I assume it's going to be another Zoom meeting. Uh, uh, and with that, do I need a motion to close? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 All in favor? <laughs> Any Aye. other discussion? Aye. Aye. No. Aye. Wonderful. Thank you, everybody, for uh, you. being out here tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Stay safe. Take good care and stay yes. healthy. Thank you. Okay.